fit troops, combatants, and supplies near the front lines. During the 1,026 days of combat, the third bomb group experienced more, expended more than 106 million pounds of rocket bombs and armor-piercing incendiaries. The long-awaited armistice had been signed, and on July 27, 1953, at 20 Dutch military time, 2200 hours, which is 10 o'clock, the ceasefire would take effect. It was very fitting that the 8th Bomb Squadron was selected to fly the last combat mission of the war since it had flown the first mission. On July 27, 1953, a B-26 night, night intruder bearing the yellow tail of the 8th Bomb Squadron opened its Bombay doors and at 2136 hours, the last load of bombs that were detonated in North Korea during the Korean War, the 8th Bomb Squadron, during the Korean War, the 8th Bomb Squadron lost 101 officers and men. Some of them I served with. It's very difficult, believe me. It was a privilege, it, is, was, it was a privilege and with pride to have served my country in Korea. I have always felt that everyone should give something back to their country and their community. Or as President John Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Serving in the United States Air Force and serving in Korea was giving back to my country. And serving on the Wellington Village Council for four years and serving as mayor for the village of Wellington for eight years was giving back to my community. And believe me, it has been great. In my opinion, the real monument to veterans of the Korean War, and it's been a long time, as you know, the real monument was whether communism or individual freedom would, be, would prevail. Individual freedom prevailed in a very large measure because of America's stand in Korea, and I was proud to be part of it. and all of the veterans who fought and died for this freedom. I quote Colonel S.P. Kelsey, third bomb group commander, who said in the Special Intelligence Summary dated July 1953, together with other units of the 5th Air Force, we have shown that the side of truth and right will be maintained. On June 25, 2000, the 50th anniversary of the Korean War, the then President of the Republic of, Republic of Korea, Kim Dae-jung, sent a letter to all Korean war veterans offering his deepest gratitude for your noble contribution to the, efforts, to the efforts to safeguard the Republic of Korea and uphold liberal democracy throughout the world. On the 60th anniversary of the Korean War, Former United States Secretary of Defense, Leon E. Panetta, wrote in a certificate of appreciation, through your selfish sacrifice, the tide of communism on the Korean Peninsula was halted, and liberty triumphed over tyranny. The Department of Defense and the peoples of America and forever are forever grateful. And I say that to all veterans who have served in World War II, Iraq, Afghanistan, and the other conflicts that we've had. I hope in some small way I have portrayed a look at what the realism of war consists of. It's not all. It's the re it's, I'm sorry if I have tears in my eyes, I'm just having a, it's not home, and it certainly is not fun. It's not a game, and it's not pretty. And many Korean veterans never received, like I did, a stateside assignment. They are still over there. 68 years ago, we lost planes because of ground fire and anti-aircraft fire. Now guided missiles and other sophisticated means of destruction are being used. In closing, I would ask my wife to come forward.
She's been gonna face it, but it's okay. <laughs> all these 68 years, besides these 50 side, be all these 68 years, and to whom I owe so much to please that she's here. Let me the sacrifice of all our veterans who have given so much so that we may live free. I'm gonna go through some things that I would like all of you to remember. Remember, it's the veteran, not the bishop, who has given us the freedom of religion. Remember, it's the veteran, not the editor, who has given us freedom of the press. Remember, it's the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. Remember, it's the, vet the veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to assemble and demonstrate. Remember, it's the veteran who salutes our flag, who serves under the flag, whose conflict is great by the flag, and whose ultimate spirit and sacrifice allows the broken and broken to burn our flag. Thank you all for being here this morning, and I apologize for something. This is very difficult for me at times. And God bless all our veterans in the United States of America. Thank you all for doing that.